What is going on everybody and welcome back into Bio Studios. Who's ready for another awesome video in the Pumpkin King Tumblr series? Now technically this video can stand on its own in its own content, but in this video we're going to be making armature supported Sculpey 3 glow in the dark teeth. Not only are they going to be aged with brown acrylics, but they're also going to be tinged with blood. What you have to look forward to, you may ask, this right here. In this video, we're going to be going ahead and creating these teeth from scratch, and then we're going to go ahead and apply them to the Pumpkin King. Sit back and enjoy this awesome content, guys. All right, let's jump into this awesome content, guys, starting off with our Pumpkin King here. Now, we have no teeth as of right now, and he's just all gums. Now, of course, he still has his eyes, nose, and mouth completely open, so we're going to fix those up later on in the processes in later videos, but for today, we're just focusing on the teeth. So we have an open slate here just to kind of create anything that we want. So if you're keeping up with the project, you know that I've already completely sculpted and painted this cigar. But as you can see, these two portions of the project are kind of like hand in hand, and they go, go pretty much together because uh, they're just uh, the same portions of the build, uh, and they all have to do with the mouth, right? So as you can see here, I've got lots of ports drilled for the armature wires for the teeth. So I've kind of planned these ahead of time. And what we're going to do is we're going to begin the process of just using a small gauge armature wire to kind of gauge what direction and curvature I want these jagged little fang teeth to, to kind of be facing. So I really used to love the movie Cr uh, Critters, little roly-poly fur balls that kind of ate people. Uh, and I loved how their teeth just kind of went all over the place and they were just really sharp and jagged with big, wide, grinning mouths. So what I want to do is I want to kind of recreate those teeth or at least just the general shape of it uh, with this. I was originally going to use a flesh tone Sculpey 3 and uh, I bought some at Michael's. It just wasn't a great quality. So I ended up switching to something else that I had and I'm glad that I did so. Now this is Sculpey 3 Glow. Uh, it is a great quality uh, clay to work with and, and I do, do love using it for a lot of projects. It has a super, super glow, guys. So let me go ahead and turn off some of the lights here in just a second and we'll see how well it glows. You'll also notice that it's very easy to work with. Breaking it apart, even just mushing it with my fingers here, with just two fingers, uh, right out of the packaging. It is super soft, it is super workable, and it is a great clay. It's got a great consistency to it. So we're going to charge it with the lights around me on, and then we'll cut them off just so you can kind of get an idea how it glows in pure darkness. So there it is in pure darkness there. I think it has an amazing glow to it. And even after you apply paints to this clay, it still can glow through. So unless you do want some glow or you're completely covering it up with a really thick layer of acrylic paint, don't use this unless you do want the glow. So here's the armature wire. What we're going to do is we're going to create some little teeth out of this. I, I did want to create the armature wire because I do want the teeth to be relatively thin overall. Uh, and I also wanted to have a little bit more contact as opposed to me just making clay teeth and just hoping that the glue holds them into place until I can get some epoxy on there. I want to have those, those little armature wires to kind of stick up into the gums of the mouth just to give it a little bit extra tooth to hold on to when I glue them into place. It also allows me to kind of plan ahead the overall jaggedness and the direction of some of the teeth. So although when I come back in later processes, I don't exactly put them in exactly the same order. I just didn't want them to be all uniform and all the same looking. So by me taking the time in this portion of the video to go ahead and kind of layer them in, give them different curvatures, give them different heights and lengths, it really allows me to diversify the teeth overall and it gives a really cool effect towards later stages. So we'll go ahead and remove the cigar there and we're just going to kind of, you know, kind of size them out. Now this is just the armature wire. This is not me sculpting the clay onto them quite yet. This is just me planning ahead, uh, building out the design the way that I'd like to create this. As you can see there, a little piece of clay did break free there. That is not a problem. We're going to fix that later stages with some, with some uh, uh, E6000 when we put the teeth permanently into place. And
All right, so you kind of get the image of what we're doing here. So we're going to jump to where I have all the armature wires already in place. And now I'm just kind of rounding out the overall design, how I want the teeth to interact with the cigar that we're going to have sticking out of his mouth. So as you can see there, I do have two pieces on my armature wire kind of trimmed short just to kind of stick out of the gums there. Uh, and I was thinking about bringing down small little teeth to kind of go into the cigar to kind of hold it into place. Uh, and I'll, I'll be honest, I ended up not using that. I decided just to kind of leave it bare bones on the cigar and just use the E6000 to kind of hold that cigar into place towards later stages. Now here is me going ahead and testing out two of the glow teeth to see how they responded to the light uh, and they gave a great glow effect. So now we're going to break away and I'm just going to show you really quickly how I'm kind of sculpting these teeth. I'm just taking the armature wire, just a small piece, whether it's curved or straight, and I'm just kind of rolling the, the clay onto the end of it and I'm just working it down until there's just enough left to where it kind of sticks into the gums. Now if I need to trim off a little bit of the armature wire off the end of it to shorten that so it fits into the little, little holes that I have made easier than I will do so. Uh, but as you can see here, it's just a really quick process. Some of them are being curved like here, and some of them are going to be straight like this one here. And it's the same throughout the entire process. And then we'll go ahead and start removing the armature wires so we can kind of get them filled in. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and start removing the armature wires. I'm really happy with how they're in general laid out. They're very jagged, they're very all over the place, and it's going to give him a really nice mouthful of jagged, spike-looking teeth. Very critter-esque, as it were. So I'm going to remove these. Just uh, be aware that all this, this is time-lapsed. As I'm pulling these out, I'm sculpting them individually and laying them on a piece of parchment paper on the oven pan to be baked. I just felt like time-lapsing that to make the content a little bit easier to enjoy. We're back with an open uh, uh, canvas here on his mouth, and here's all of those little armature uh, teeth laid out on the pan to be baked. I tried to keep them in order, but that ended up not being the case. I kind of put them in the mouth as I see fit later on in the process, and it's very randomized. I kind of like the fact that they kind of look like little maggots, almost, kind of grunge and kind of nasty. So if you were to make maggots and they wanted to make them glow in the dark, this kind of uh, Sculpey 3 would be really great for that. So as you can see, they're really great. They turned out so good beyond my expectations, and we're going to begin the process of painting these. Now, I had made some shorts uh, for YouTube and also for some of my TikTok followers to see uh, kind of just kind of escalating and getting ready for this video to be released. Uh, I really did enjoy the process of painting these little teeth and I look forward to making more for future projects. So I'm just using a scrap piece of uh, styrofoam here uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and just use the armature wires and shove them down into the styrofoam and then we're just going to kind of slowly enjoy the painting process. So here is what it looks like under a glow light with lights around me. And then here it is in complete darkness. Now that thing looks absolutely awesome. I'm so excited. All right, so we're gonna begin the process of layering on some acrylics. Very watered down here, we are gonna use uh, a raw sienna. A very light brown color, and I wanna just give them a, a, a little bit of a glaze. Just kinda grunge them out just a little bit. Bring a little bit of dirt texture into the overall look of them. And then what we'll do is we're gonna introduce uh, burnt umber into the tips of each individual fang or tooth uh, until I can kinda get the overall dark tone that I want. So here we are with the raw sienna pretty much completed out there. And I bring, do bring a little bit of it here and there throughout the process. Some of them even towards the very last stages before I'm finished with the teeth after they've been applied to the actual pumpkin king mouth just to kind of detail them out. Uh, here I am, I'm beginning to introduce burnt umber into this and it's more of just a reddish 
to darker brown tone and I'm really focusing on the tips of each fang individually just so that I can make the tips look quite a bit darker they kind of stand out a little bit whereas the bases are a little bit wider uh, or glow a little bit stronger towards the base of each individual fang I'm switching up brushes there uh, I'm just using just a kid's brush there just to apply a lot of it very liberally to each individual tip some of the armature wire was popping out of the foam there and I keep having to correct that but it's no problem at all as you can see there, they're starting to get darker and darker through the stages. And I do begin to introduce the heat gun just to kind of accelerate the dry time so I can add more colors and so I get the tips as dark as I want. Looking absolutely great, guys. I love this, and I hope you're enjoying the painting process. This probably is my most favorite part of this entire process is painting these out. Everything else leading up to this is great and all, but the paint really bring them to life. Of course, we're going to introduce some alizarin crimson into each individual tip, and I'm going to water that down just so it has a nice liquidy effect so that I'm able to bring those colors down each and every edge, sometimes of the teeth, just to kind of give a randomized effect. I don't want it to be very uniform. I want it to be very random and jagged, kind of like maybe he, he, he broke free of the pumpkin patch, he came alive, and maybe he got a hold of something somebody um, and took a bite out of them really cool little design i look forward to making more of these little bloody teeth in the future for more projects So here are the teeth beside the Pumpkin King himself. Uh, I love the contrast between all of the colors, and it looks really good in the foam because it's just pure white. But let's begin the process of actually applying these to the Pumpkin King. Now, I've ran out of clear E6000, so I just decided to run with it, and I used uh, I had some uh, white E6000 with me. I went ahead and began using it instead. I want to make sure I come back later with some uh, raw sienna and burnt umber again and maybe even a little bit of ink, uh, maybe like a, um, a sepia ink to kind of darken out where the teeth are making contact with the gums of the Pumpkin King towards later stages of this portion of the project. But uh, the overall color of the glue really doesn't matter as long as it's not something I can't or would be unable to paint over uh, in an efficient manner. So uh, YE6000 is no problem at all. It really does not matter. So there's the first two uh, few teeth there. Uh, they, they, they really look great. And I'm really feeling it out. I'm taking my time, enjoying this part of the process, enjoying putting them in. And as I start to work my way across the mouth, I'll start to rearrange them and I start to go out of order until I kind of get the overall uh, look that I want as I work my way towards the end result, which would be the cigar. So sit back and enjoy this part of the process. I'm gonna let the time lapse take over from here. Just enjoy. My apologies, my hand got in the way quite a bit there towards the end of this portion of the project here. But look how great these little bloody fangs look. They are so cool. And I think what really needs to wrap it all together is the cigar. Now, I had not propped this cigar up, so you'll see in just a few minutes that this thing completely falls out, rolls across the floor with the glue already on it, and it gets dog hair from my border collie all over it and I have to wipe it off and wash it off uh, in the sink and then have to try again. 
Uh, I was like, no! As it like rolls away and up under one of my little drawers where my paints are stored, and it's just like I have to move everything to get on my hands and knees and find it. And it's like, dag gum it. <laughs> so this is a little bit of a messy process here. I, I wish I had used clear for this portion just because I'm using substantially more glue than than uh, than the teeth, but it's still okay. I'm gonna come in with some paints and we'll kind of wash this out, and we're gonna have some other portions of the project uh, here shortly that will kind of wrap the bottoms of the teeth where they're making contact with the the, the gums, and there it goes, rolled across the floor. So this is almost the finished result. You can really see that that bleached white E6000 glue on that front tooth there and then and out and around the edges of the cigar there. Now I did prop the cigar up this time, so, so kudos for that. Uh, and after it was dried a little bit and in place uh, permanently to where I could, could trust it to stay there, I went ahead and uh, kind of darkened out the roots of each individual teeth. Uh, I brought in um, I brought uh, in more of a, a orange and uh, maybe a daffodil yellow uh, into the bottoms of the tooth just to kind of repair any kind of pure white spots before I brown them out. Here is a side view of what it looks like as a glow. Uh, and then we're going to roll into some glamour shots. I really do hope y'all enjoy this part of the, the process and the overall Pumpkin King series. I really do look forward to making more of these little bloody teeth for more projects in the future. I know that people really like the grunge and the horror, so we're going to try to make more stuff like this in the future. Be sure to smash that subscribe button. It really does push me to make bigger and better content in the future. I really do want to expand my artwork and get into a lot of different things for you guys. Otherwise, leave a comment below. Tell me what you think about the bloody teeth. Any kind of projects you guys would like to see in the future, let me know. But otherwise, I'll catch you guys later. Thank you for watching. Check out all of these awesome videos.